In the previous video, I talked about the process from drawing a character on a piece of paper to modeling a base mesh based on that drawing. In this video, I will talk about the steps I took to sculpt the base mesh from this to this. Let's go. The first thing I do was to apply the remesh modifier to densify the base mesh so that we have enough polygon density to start sculpting. When sculpting this character, I am mainly using four tools. The grab brush to manipulate the outline of the mesh, the draw brush to push and pull on the surface of the mesh, the smooth brush to smooth out the surface, and the mask tool to isolate regions during sculpting. The first step is to use the grab brush to round off the mesh. Mark out the lip line using the draw brush, and then by using a back and forth combination of the masking tool and the grab brush, shape the mouth into place. The masking tool was invaluable when shaping the lips because it allows you to shape the upper lip without accidentally also shaping the lower lip, and vice versa. For the eyes, I duplicated the eyeball, separate the top and bottom half of the duplicate, rotate the two halves into place, and shape them using the grab brush. After closing the mitt around the eye sockets onto the eyelids, I proceed to bowl on the face, the top and bottom eyelid together and remesh them as a single entity again, and continue to use the grab brush to round off more of the base mesh. The nose outline was further refined using the grab brush and the draw brush was used to make the breathing holes. Extra love was spent on the eyes. I spent a lot of time on the eyes. There is a specific type of eyes that I'm very attracted to and that is the double eyelid with the second eyelid drooling over the first eyelid. I will not be implementing that feature during the sculpting phase because I prefer to do that during the retubalization stage. Final refinements using the grab brush and the shaping of the ear as the last phase of this sculpting process. Time to move on to the retubalization stage. I start by painting how I want the polygons to flow directly on the mesh itself. I then proceed to spend almost all of the retopology time on the eye area. There is a very specific way I drew eyes because I'm very attracted to certain eye features and I have a deep desire to make this character's eyes have those features.
proceeding with retopolization of the rest of the head. I'll be leaving the neck out of the equation as I really just want to focus on the head here. The ear is one of those structures that are just much easier to sculpt first and then retopologize later as opposed to polymodeling it directly, so I'm very grateful for Blender's sculpting capabilities. I also must confess that I don't usually retopologize ears from scratch like this often. I'm only doing this for this particular character. Normally, I would just use an existing ear in my regular projects. Now as a final touch, I will add in the tear shine that will catch highlights between the intersection of the eyeball and the lower eyelid. And with that, the head geometry is done. In the coming videos, I may talk about how to model an entire body base mesh in Blender quickly and easily. And I may also talk about how to paint a character head so that it looks rosy and appealing. This is Bristol Jack and uh, I will see you next week.